What's up story chasers? Well, this video is going to be about the lessons I learned traveling solo to Alaska, but first I think I need to do a little bit of explaining. So I left Whitehorse, Canada and I made my way back down south, but I was still in this major funk. So in my last video I was talking about some of the things that I was going through and the emotional things that I was feeling and I still just could not shake it. So in all honesty, I just didn't feel like filming or even being on camera. So what you're going to see is me traveling from Whitehorse down to Leadville, Colorado and everything in between. Part of the reason I didn't want to be on camera is because of my weight gain and you guys might have noticed it over the last couple of months. I noticed it when I was editing my videos and ugh, it was a difficult thing for me to even edit my videos because I was seeing this weight gain and I was just feeling very upset with myself and angry and frustrated and you know this is not something that I've really talked to you guys about. Um, I do have an eating disorder, I'm an emotional eater and there's some things that trigger it but a lot of times it's when I'm in high stress situations or tension that I kind of fall back into old patterns. One of the things that I don't do is I don't do diets anymore. It's been several years since I decided to stop doing diets, but I need to have this balance, right? And sometimes my balance just isn't there, and this was one of those times, which is why I didn't even want to be on camera. And I know there's a lot of you out there who really support me, and don't judge me. There's several people out there who do, because there has been comments and stuff on my YouTube channel, which is really kind of sad to be honest with you that people feel like they have to make comments about someone's physical appearance but nonetheless I was judging myself I think and feeling like oh my god these people are gonna see my weight gain on here and I was just feeling really sad about the whole situation to be honest with you and trying to understand why I was in this place again where I wasn't able to control what I was doing with my eating and balance and my weight. It's one of those things that's just really, really hard for me to even discuss, which is why you guys have not heard me talk about it before on my channel, but I've decided to just open up about it and maybe this can help somebody else out there and some of the struggles that they're dealing with. But I think I finally have things under control again. I'm in a much better spot and I'm happier now. I am starting to lose weight again, which is good. Okay, so let's get back to the video and the lessons that I learned while traveling solo to Alaska. And hopefully you guys can learn a little bit from this. Even if you are a couple traveling, just know that some of these things can still apply to you. Next stop is Jasper National Park in Alberta, Canada. This place is just breathtaking and the water is this brilliant green glass color, sometimes a little blue. I ended up staying here only one night just across from the Columbia ice fields and dang, what a view that was. It was so beautiful. One of the lessons I learned on this trip is that I overextended myself with work and travel. Driving 7,000 miles round trip as a solo traveler in one and a half months while operating a business and the new Nomad Mentorship Bootcamp course was just super challenging for me. I don't even like to drive that much even though I live in a van as some of you might think that I like to drive because I do live in a van but I don't like to drive that much. 7,000 miles in a very short amount of time is just nuts in my opinion. Consequently, I was just extremely tired and needed some rest. I ended up getting a hotel room while I was in Spokane, Washington. I was there to see clients for a couple of days and well, a couple of days turned into about 10 days of living in the hotel room. I just needed to decompress and sleep and not move. That was my other lesson learned. Traveling solo and working, you have to do everything. Drive, work, travel, film, and then do it all over again. Look, I'm not complaining. I have a very good life. I just didn't manage my time or my self-care very well, so I was exhausted. I finally left Spokane, Washington to make my way to Colorado and join some friends. I felt so much more relaxed after my 10-day hotel stay, and now it was time to get back to some nature. Dillon, Montana was first on my list and my resting place for the night at Clark Canyon Reservoir. What a beautiful area. I had never been here before. It was exactly what I needed to continue my healing of my funk 
and getting some rest. My other lesson learned was that I'm reminded that I need to continue slowing down and not take so many huge leaps. I put so much pressure on myself to get things done in my business that it just all came crashing down around me. I even questioned what I was doing. Am I on the right path? Should I continue making YouTube videos and vlogging? I mean, I seriously considered that maybe I should just blog and take photos and give up the YouTube channel. But at the end of the day, I love it and I love sharing this life with you all and interacting with you and also hopefully providing some inspiration to you guys on living a non-traditional minimalist life. I can see how you might be thinking that here she is stressed out and overextending herself and in this funk, so how can that be inspirational? Well, this is real life and I'm trying to show you all the good stuff about this life, but also the real life issues that happen and get in the way as well. You all need to see both sides to it. Most of the time I'm pinching myself about how amazing my life is, but these last couple of months have thrown me for a loop and I've had to overcome some challenges with the van fire. My mental health with my weight gain, being tired, the weather, driving too much, and overextending myself with my business and my travel. I'm very excited to be meeting up with some friends in Colorado. Lily and I are ready to have some social time and enjoy these cooler temperatures in Leadville, Colorado. One of the other lessons I learned was that throughout all of these challenges, things might go wrong like the van fire and things will break, but the kindness of humans to go out of their way to help you is staggering. I mean, Mark and Shay helped me out with putting the fire out and staying with me. Gordon flew up from San Francisco to Alaska to make some repairs on my van and get me back on the road. And Jason and Hillary let me stay at their place in Fairbanks to do the repairs. I'm just so grateful to everyone who has helped me. Part of that lesson learned is that if you need parts really quickly in Alaska, well, that's challenging in and of itself because it's Alaska and very far away and it's hard to get anything overnighted there. So the lesson learned here is that if you think something might need to be repaired, you might wanna bring up some supplies with you just in case you can't get to them quickly in Alaska. Thankfully, the things that needed to be repaired on my van were things that Gordon could bring with him or that Alaska already had, and we were able to get most of the repairs done. And then I'll do the rest in the lower 48. Well, we're in Colorado now, and this is just past Fruta. It's beautiful over here. Just pulled over off to the side to rest a little bit. I finally made it to Leadville, Colorado, the highest incorporated city in the United States at 10,125 feet. And just in time for the Leadville 100, where people literally run 100 miles through the Rocky Mountain terrain and are limited to 30 hours to complete it. Like, that's staggering to me. We were able to cheer on some of the runners late that evening as they passed by our campsite and I got to enjoy the company of my fellow RVers on this dark road along the side of the National Forest waiting for these runners to come by so that we could give them a little bit of inspiration. I seriously loved Leadville. They have some incredible restaurants. However, the elevation was really getting to me and I was experiencing some altitude sickness. Okay guys, so that was my lessons learned traveling solo to Alaska. I feel like this is a super vulnerable vi video for me because I've never really talked about my eating disorder and just really some of the challenges that I have while I'm doing this life while I'm traveling and having a business and all of that, but I wanted to be really transparent with you guys and show you 
what it can be like. Now you may not have an eating disorder, or you may not have, you may not be traveling solo, you may be a couple that's traveling, but some of these things can still apply to you. One of the things that I know that I have to really manage is my self care. I am that type of person where when I get super busy or super stressed out, you know, I dive right into my work and I can work all hours of the day, especially when it's my own business. So stopping and making sure that I take time for self care is, oh my God, that scared me of the van. <laughs> It sounded like a bird or something was over there. Um, anyway, so stopping to, you know, make sure that I take care of myself and eat well and meditate and do yoga and move around and stuff like that um, is really, really important. So in the next two weeks, you're going to see a video that actually talks about the pros and cons of going to Alaska based on my own experience and things that I have seen while I was there. So hopefully that will help you when you're deciding to travel to Alaska, whether you're going to drive or whether you're going to fly and rent an RV or maybe just Airbnb it up there. And guys, I am so thankful for you. I really, really appreciate you guys reaching out to me. Some of you have reached out asking how I'm doing, making sure that I'm okay, especially because of the van fire. And I think you noticed in my videos that I was a little bit down uh, compared to how I normally am. So I really, really appreciate it. I'm so grateful to every single one of you. Thank you so much. So if you like this video, go ahead and hit that like button. If you haven't subscribed already, Please subscribe, it helps me grow, it helps more people see my videos. And that's it until the next video. See you guys next week, bye. Lily has an outie. We are soaking her foot. She's got a little bit of a wound. We had to go to the vet and they lanced it.